Hey gang, thanks for bearing with me while I was traveling last week and I'm very grateful for those of you who reached out to me for assistance with your storyboard or questions or brainstorming. I had a couple of brainstorming sessions by email and then on Friday had a little bit of brainstorming with some of the students who were here for the retreat. It's not too late. If you've got a question, if you're stumped, if you need some ideas, let me know. But there's three main things that I noticed in looking at the sections of your storyboards that you shared. Thank you so much for doing that. And especially thank you for the feedback that you're providing to each other because that is a key component of this class and of this activity. Number one, practice good design. For those of you who have already taken or who are concurrently enrolled in ITEC 5320, think back, remember what we've talked about in terms of font selection, in terms of color theory, in terms of layout and white space. All of those rules still apply. So we want to practice good design when we can. If what I'm saying sounds slightly foreign to you, don't worry about it. You can do some quick Google searches and find some great tips, or you can reach out to me. I can share with you a couple of resources that I keep handy for just this thing. If you're really feeling adventurous, head over to my Pinterest boards. I've got a couple of different EdTech boards related to designs and multimedia. That can give you some ideas and things to look for. But in general, you want to make sure that you are practicing good design. And don't let the themes that you choose, depending on the different tools and resources, constrain you. For example, we use PowerPoint a lot with Camtasia. And if you notice, I'm breaking that rule on this slide. I am constrained in how much space I can use because of the template I've chosen. Typically that doesn't come into play a whole lot in this class. Occasionally it does. When you are building a training module or a video or a tutorial, you want to take that into consideration. You want to make sure that you can use as much space as possible, which leads me to something else. You're not stuck with PowerPoint in Camtasia. There's a black surface, a, and you can even change the, the color of the canvas in Camtasia. And that's a playing field to work off of. You can then use the annotations to draw on that surface. You can import still pictures. You can import video files. You can import animated GIFs. Any media can be imported into Camtasia if that's what you're using. So don't let the tools constrain you either. And then that second bit there, plan as much as you can in pre-production. The more that you can plan ahead of time, the less you have to work in post-production to clean up. Examples, every now and then you run into issues with your audio. I know that students who were in 5320 ran into this when they did their theory presentation. Maybe they were recording at home and the dogs were going a little crazy. I know that when I try to do these overviews from home, my three dogs make it near impossible. Or I'll be sitting in my office working on these overviews and suddenly somebody calls me and I have to start my recording all over again. Those things I can't necessarily plan for unless I put myself in a locked room that's silent. That's what I'm getting at. You don't have to worry about as much editing post-production using the features to drown out background noise or increase your volume because your mic was too soft. Think about those things in advance as much as you can. But overall, I think you guys are doing well. I did want to point out that it came out in the conversation, not that I was keeping this hidden per se. This is a competition. You are all working on the same topic for the same client. The client will then review all of your videos and decide which one or ones, multiple, to implement. Maybe someone takes a different angle and they focus on different aspects than the others. And the client says, I want that video and I want this other video because I like the way that they were designed. So keep that in mind as we're working on the project. Why was I not up front with that information? In the past, when I have put that out there with the assignment description, I've had some students get a little anxious and that anxiety colors their experience and some students have a difficult time moving beyond the thought of a client selecting their work. So that's why I kept it quiet. But that's not to say that I didn't want it to come out. As it did, it came out in general conversation and that's perfectly fine. So now I felt the need to share with the entire class that this is a competition of sorts. In class, I'm grading you on your design principles and how well you follow the guidelines that we've discussed this semester. The client 
doesn't care about design principles, doesn't care about modality or redundancy. The client cares about the final project. It's up to us to make the client understand why some of these principles are important. So that's the conversation that I've already had with our client. Just something to keep in mind as you continue working on this project. So with that, let's get ready for this week. Use the on-screen navigation to access another section of this week's overview.